Calvin Willock served in the Army Air Force during World War II. Calvin was a gunner on a B-24 bomber where he completed 50 combat missions during World War II, earning 10 air medals. Okay, tell me your name. Calvin Willocks. Calvin Willocks. And where are you from? Blunt County, Maryland. Okay. Where did you go to school? I went to Clover Hill, Benfield, and Lanier. Lanier? Lanier High School? Yeah. And what year did you graduate from Lanier? 41. 1941. And so the, the World War II wasn't going on just yet. No, it's and, hard. Last of the year. Okay. And what were you doing between graduating high school and, I guess, entering the service? I worked in Alcoa. Worked in Alcoa. And when did you enter the service? 42. 1942? October. October. What branch of service did you enter? Air Force. Air Force. And where did, where was your training, your first initial basic training at? Fresno, California. And did, how did you get there? Did you take a train? Took a train. And I was you, on a train five days. And do you remember that? What What was it like being on the train? Well, it wasn't bad, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd never been on a train. Yeah. What, were you with a lot of fellow soldiers? Yeah, yep. yeah I was a train loader. Okay. And once you got to California, what what was your training like? I had 11 days for basic training. Okay. And then after that 11 days? Uh, they sent me down to L.A. Los Angeles? Yeah. Okay. Uh, training day, of course, that's part of Los Angeles. I went to school, uh, A.M. school, okay. three or four months. And wh what does A.M. school mean? What? It's uh, aircraft mechanic. Aircraft mechanic school, okay. And then once you finished going to A.M. school? I went to factory school over in San Diego. Okay. And, and I went through it, and let's see, after I got through it, I went I've changed so much. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So uh, after you finished all your training and schooling, were you assigned to a uh, a group or, or a I went to gunnery school? Gunnery Just school. Just after I went through that school, I went to the gunnery school in Fort Myers, Florida. Okay. And after I got through with that. I went, we got on a train and went to uh, Salt Lake City. Okay, and what was in Salt Lake City? Well, we, we saw a lesson that came from where they assigned you out to different places. Mm -hmm. And we went to, down to uh, Tucson, our base there in Tucson. That's where I took my training on the B-24. Okay, so you were assigned to a B-24? Yeah. And then once once you finish your training on the B twenty four, where did you, where did they well, send you? They, they sent me to Nebraska. Okay. And and what, I flew out of there until I went overseas. Okay. So when you went overseas, where where did you uh, land at? Well, we started out, of course, there in Kansas. Went down through Florida, down to Brazil, blew an engine, had to, had to wait a, a month for it to come in. We had to put the engine in. Then we flew over to Af Africa. Africa. The car up the coast and on, up, on over to Italy. Okay. And was that your final destination was Italy? Is that where you were stationed? Mm -hmm. uh, I came back and was stationed in three or four places. Okay. And while you were in Italy, you were assigned to a B-24. And what was what was the name of your B-24? Shanghai Lil Sister. Shanghai Lil Sister. And with the first time you saw saw your B-24, what did you, what did you think about it? 
<laughs> well, I, you know, I really didn't have much thoughts about it. And I, had, uh, I flew on three different planes. The first, and we were shot up so bad that the plane never flew again. So they gave us another plane. And it had red cows on it. So I don't know whether you've heard of Shanghai, of the Texas Sally or not. She was one of them people that, you know, talked to the Americans over there and had a radio station. And she said the one time after we got that plane, she said, we saw you up there today, we'll get you the next time you come. <laughs> and, you know, and she just done stuff like that. Wow. And uh, so you said you were shot up. The the plane was shot up, your first one. I never flew again. Mm -hmm. And was it shot on a mission? Yeah. And That's when we had the 176 holes in it. You had 176 holes in your plane. There was that many holes and nobody got a scratch in it. Wow. That's amazing. There must have been somebody with us. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, how many combat missions did you fly? Well, of course, it was all considered combat because the last 15 were, were dropping supplies to the underground, French underground. Mm -hmm. And then, so you said the last 15, how many were before fi the last 15? 35. Okay, so you had 50 combat missions yeah. during World War II. And, and while you were on the B-24, what, what was your job? Well, of course, I was a gunner, mm -hmm. and that was my biggest job, but I'd you know, done everything about checking the plane stuff, and, and when we was dropping supplies one time, I, the, uh, the trigger that they had, that pilot, the bombardier, he, he triggered it, but the, the triggers wouldn't work on the bombs, he dropped them out of the bottom bay. So I had to walk up through the catwalk and trigger them, drop them, drop wow. the bombs, or drop the supplies. How high up do you think you were? Oh, we, we dropped supplies, we got out of pretty low. Mm -hmm. um, uh, on your B-24, did you have the same crew on each mission? Mm -hmm. And And then before each mission, did they brief you or did... Yeah, yeah, I had it. Well, I went to a briefing room every morning. And they, they tried to tell us as much as they could about what we to expect. And were they, was it accurate or, or you just never usually, knew? Usually pretty close. Mm -hmm. Did you have some close calls other than the one that, the 176? Well, we had a, uh, that was the worst one. But we had several times got it shot up pretty bad, but nothing like that. As over Regensburg, Germany, the okay. whole brain factory. Oh, wow. And after each mission, did, did you do a briefing? Yeah, they always took you in. Yeah. And anything heroic? Did any of your fellow... Well, nobody... I, I don't think anybody ever got hurt at all. Okay. And what did you think of the pilot? Pilot? Yeah. First class. First class. You remember his name? Yeah. Jones. Jones. And you pretty close knit crew? Oh yeah, everybody. You know, we had a good crew. Well, good. So once um, you completed the 50 combat missions, what what were you assigned to do after that? Well, came back and, and uh, they gave us a furlough and went home, I think, for 20 days. And they, they wrote and told me that we could bring our wife to Florida. So uh, we got ready to bring her and they called and said, no, they had a hurricane and couldn't bring them. So, we went down there anyway, but of course she didn't go, but mm -hmm. then they assigned me to go to another school. So I went to Mississippi to B-24 school. Okay. 
And uh, went, they went there for about, I don't know, six weeks or two months, something like that. And we got through there, and they sent us to Ypsilanti, Michigan to go to school again. Wow. They didn't know what to do with us, you mm -hmm. know. They was getting prepared for Japan, you know, B-29s, because they weren't going to use the B-24s much. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to Ypsilanti and stayed there, went to school, and then they gave me a three-day pass. I went home and got my wife, and we went down to Chanute Field, Illinois, Champaign, and they put me in a machine shop there. I worked there when I got out of the army. Okay. And let's back up just a little bit. When you came home on your furlough for 20 days, did you get to see your mom and dad? Oh, yeah. What, what was that after you've been through all, all that combat? Well, you know, that, that time whenever we had all the bullet holes, we had to make a forced landing. And then they, we wrote us up at Missing in Action. And they was fixing to send it to her people. I caught a ride back on the B-25, back to the base, and so they didn't have to send that out. Wow. And when you saw your mom and dad, was it a good, yeah. great to see them? And yeah, they, they had come time. I hadn't heard from me for a while before I, well, I was on the way home, you know, and they were kind of worried about that. And you had three other brothers, right? And two of them were also in World War Two, right? Yep. Did One, you? Clem was in the Air Force, and Ray was in the uh, CBs, I guess you call it. Okay. Did you ever get to communicate with them during the war? Just a little bit of a time or two. Mm -hmm. it, Ray was up in San Francisco when I was in Los Angeles. Talk to him a time or two then. Okay. Well, good. And what are your, you know, t you're 92 years old today, and you're going to be 93 in January. Right. What, what does it feel like to be a World War II veteran? What's at, it like? At, you know, more than 70 years later. What does it feel like for you? Yeah. A lot of it, I guess, <laughs> you know, I, I've had a good life. Army's treated me good. Uh, everybody's, you know, at, excellent. And the Veterans Administration has treated me good. And I've been, you know, I've had a good life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything you want to talk about in the service that we didn't cover? That Any stories or any... Well, you know, I, I saw you talking about going over the target. Mm -hmm. One time we was going over, and uh, right above us, you know, we floored the box formation. Four planes got together and went down. They crashed. Yeah. Like they ran into each other. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, we, we flew in a formation, you know, and mm -hmm. somewhere the one got messed up. You did know. you see that? Yeah. Wow. Did do you know if any of them survived? No, never did hear. Never did hear. Don't know who who they were. And when you would go on these missions, there would there would be a many planes that went on them, right? Oh yeah. And are we talking dozens or hundreds? Hundreds of planes. Okay. So you really went over in force and oh yeah and uh, yeah they go over. You know, the fighter planes couldn't, they couldn't accompany us all the way. So they would meet us coming back. Whenever whenever we were shot up so bad, the engine shot out and none of them were smoking. They, they, they met, we, we weren't able to keep up with the formation. Mm -hmm. But they came to the formation and they came on back and run the fighter planes off. If it hadn't been for that, we never made it. Wow. 
And you said you had a hard landing, right? With the yeah, pretty, pretty hard because three engines, one of them about to go out, another about to go out. Wow. And just a short runway too, you know. Mm -hmm. we, well, just barely got over the lines there in Italy. Mm -hmm. I was stationed down there, guitarly. That's down below Naples. Okay. And when when your other B twenty fours didn't didn't come back, did did y'all have any ceremonies or any? Well, no, they never usually mm -hmm. didn't have. They, I guess they couldn't have anything like that. Hardly way. Sure. Long. We had uh, eighteen crews in our squadron, and the last I heard, only three of them got back. Wow. What what was the name of your squadron? The seven eighteenth. The seven eighteenth. Okay. How how far could the B twenty four go before it would run out of fuel? Yeah, we. I don't exactly how many miles though. We we'd be gone twelve hours sometimes. Well, wow. we fly from southern Italy up over Germany. And back, you know, it's, I'd say it's at least a thousand miles more than that, I think. Okay. I and between, you know, when you were on your way on a mission, was the crew pretty relaxed or focused or? Well, it was kind of according to what we got into usually. People, we only had one guy that really liked to broke up. The rest of them pretty well took it, but he, he got, he would just shake all over and really had, it really worked on him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once the war was over, after you said you went, they sent you back to school because they didn't really know what to do with you. And then you had got, when did you separate from the, the military? September 45. Okay, September of 1945. And you came back here to Maryville? Yeah. And you just went straight to work or you took a little? Yeah, about a week after I got back, I went to work. Mm -hmm. Went to St. Louis and got discharged. Okay. And what, what was the feeling in America after you got back? Did you? Mm -hmm. Most people. You know, I was mighty glad to see it over with. And most mm -hmm. people, they they thought about people that was in the war. Most people did. Mm -hmm. Did you lose any friends that were from Maryville that you went to high school with? Yeah. yeah. Was that hard to think about? Well, well, I wasn't. You know, went to school with them, but I really wasn't that close to them. You know. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to share with us about being in the military during World War Two? Well, I just, I guess, I, really, I had it better than most people. I, you know, uh, it, you know I, I never got treated bad anywhere. Well, that's good. Well, we are really proud of you, and well, uh, thank you. I, I really wasn't that, wasn't that great of doing anything. I done my job. That's right. I mean, you 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 entered the service and you did what you were asked to do, and that's that's all we can expect. So, I mean, we're really proud of you, and and uh, your generation. Well. Oh, Brokaw says it's a great generation. It is the greatest generation. I don't generation. know about that. Yeah. But uh, really proud of you, and, and thank you so much for doing this interview today. Good. I'm glad I could do it. Yeah, I am too. Thank you.